My name's Chelsea and I'm here with Silk or Lace, your destination for all things wigs, toppers, and my favorite, hair. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about things that you should know when you're new to wearing wigs and toppers. Let's picture it. Maybe you just received your new amazing wig or topper and you're just suddenly filled with anxiety and questions. What are return hairs? How do I know if I'm doing this right? Does my wig fit? Don't worry, I've definitely got you guys. I've rounded up the most common questions about wigs or toppers and I'm gonna answer them for you today. So the first most common concern when someone gets their first new wig or topper is if their wig or topper is fitting correctly. Let's start with wigs. You'll know if your wig is fitting correctly, if it's sitting nice and snug, it's not moving around too much on your head, and it feels comfortable. Notice that I say comfortable, right? Because let's be honest, nine times out of 10, you're gonna know that there's a wig on your head. So how do you know if your wig is too small? Well, first of all, if your wig is too small, you're probably gonna be getting some of that discomfort that I talked to you about earlier. You will definitely be getting a little bit of pressure here on your temples, and you might even have the clips inside the wig doing a little bit of a death grip back on your bio hair trying to escape from your head. So if you're having any major pulling or pain around your temples, then that's a really big sign that your wig cap could be too small for you. The second sign that your wig cap is too small for you is if you notice it trying to do a little bit of another escape artist move, run away, from the top of your head here. If you notice that the hairline is getting bigger and bigger and you're seeing too much of your own scalp or your own bio hair underneath, that's a really big sign that the wig cap is too small and it's trying to get extra space by moving backwards. The last big sign that your wig cap is too small is actually mostly noticeable on a lace front. So if you notice that your lace here at the top is folding underneath, then that means that the lace is stretched too tight and it means that your wig cap could probably be a little bit too small for you. So how do you know if your wig cap is too big for you? Well, the first big sign if your wig cap is too big, it's pretty obvious, is that your wig cap is moving all around and the scalp is lifting up from your head whenever you make the slightest movement. Now look, I'm not saying that any wig can definitely withstand like major head banging to heavy metal, but it definitely shouldn't be flying off or moving around too much when you just are nodding your head or just going about your day to day. The second big sign that your wig is too big for you is if you can see your own bio hair through the lace ear tabs of your hairline. If you can see too much of that, that is a really big sign that your wig is hanging off of you and it is way too big. The final sign that your wig cap might be a little bit too big for you is if you notice the lace around your hairline folding upwards or lifting up excessively. Now, sometimes this can naturally happen with a lot of wigs. If your lace is lifting a little bit, it's actually pretty easy to fix with a little bit of adhesive, like wig tape or wig glue. But if it's happening excessively, that's a sign that your wig cap is probably a little bit too big for you. Now, full disclosure, there are some fixes that you can use to rectify these issues. For example, if your wig cap is too big, then you could wear a wig grip underneath and that might help sort out some of the issues surrounding sizing. You could also adjust the straps at the nape of the neck. Most wigs come with adjusters at the back that allow you to tighten at least the circumference of your wig. However, if your wig is too small, it's a little bit more difficult and challenging to fix that. So the best policy I always say is to measure beforehand. So measure before you purchase all of your measurements of your head and make sure you get that perfect fit before you've invested all of your time and feelings into a piece. So how do you know if your topper fits you correctly? Toppers are a little bit different from wigs since they tend to have a more kind of flat circumference than an overall one. So you can have a little bit more wiggle room with a topper. Your topper is too small if you can see 
excessive amounts of your area of hair loss. So for example, if you have the type of hair loss around your crown and you can see too much of your bio hair or hair loss underneath, that means that you might need a bigger cap size. Another way to tell if your topper is too small for you is if you feel excessive traction and pulling on the clips of your topper. That might mean that you need a larger cap size because you are trying to clip into too sparse of area for yourself. The next really common concern that a lot of people have when they get their first wig or topper is whether or not the color and the length suits them. Let's talk about toppers first because this is a really tricky one for toppers. So with toppers, obviously, you have the unique experience of having a lot of your bio hair visible underneath. So that can be a little bit tricky when you're trying to get a good match, but they're definitely workable. It's not as hard as you think. The main thing to note about toppers is that it's best if your hair is either the same length or any place shorter than your topper. Even if you have hair that's about this length and your topper is as long as the wig I'm wearing right now, that can still be workable because you can blend with styling. So you can do either waves or curls in the same texture, particularly if you have thinner ends, it will blend more seamlessly with your topper. However, if your hair is longer than your topper, it can be really challenging to get that to blend properly without getting a haircut to your bio hair. If your hair is within the similar shading of your topper, so for example, if you have light brown hair or dark blonde and you're going for a more lighter or ashy blonde on top, that actually is pretty easy usually to blend together with nice styling, right? However, if your hair is more like a very dark deep brown and you're thinking of something like my color like a copper or strawberry blonde that shade difference might be a little bit too noticeable to blend for a topper and you should probably be opting for a wig as far as finding the right length or color to suit you for any hair piece we recommend when you get your first hair piece to take lots of pictures and different types of lighting right so hair can look really different depending on whether it's in direct sunlight or artificial lighting inside it can look almost like completely different colors so we recommend taking lots of pictures and making sure you're completely happy in your piece by comparing and really living with that hair for those few days right that you first have it so you can make the best decision on whether it is your dream hair or maybe it needs a bit of tweaking a lot of people actually get their hair professionally cut or tweaked after getting it nine times out of ten hair is not going to be your dream perfect hair right out of the box it might need a little bit of professional investment and tweaking the final really common kind of area of questions that we get when people first get their wigs or toppers is about the hairline and the part line areas. So the first big thing that people often ask about are the little hairs that you might notice either around your part line, your hairline, or even at the nape of your wig. And these hairs are not breakage, which is a really common misconception. They're actually called return hairs, and they're the shorter hairs of the longer pieces that are sewn into the cap of your wig. So just because you know what they are doesn't make them any less annoying. However, they are totally manageable to deal with and you can definitely blend them in with the rest of your hair. We recommend either using a hot tool like a hot comb to kind of blend the hair seamlessly and make it go in the direction and sit better with the longer pieces that it is with or we also recommend using a light hair product, like a little bit of hair wax or hair gel. We don't recommend hairspray as much because the alcohol in it can impact the color of the hair. So that's just something to bear in mind. But return hairs are totally manageable and honestly a very normal part of almost every wig I've ever owned. That brings me on to the hairline and part line of wigs. So hairline and part lines of wigs, especially lace tops, tend to take a little bit of extra effort to get them looking really realistic. So the first thing that I usually do, especially if I have some visible knots on my hairline or part line, is that I like to give a light little dusting underneath in the wig cap of that area 
in a powder or concealer a similar skin tone to my own. So if you just do that nice and lightly underneath, don't necessarily going in on top, but underneath the cap, then you'll find that you get a much more seamless effect when the wig is actually on your head and those knots are not visible in the least. Another thing that I like to do when I have a lace top wig is that I like to put a little bit of glue just here on the part line to make that transition really seamless. This isn't something that most of our wig brands require, but it's also something just to bear in mind that if you're concerned about that transition looking really natural and flawless, there are lots of options to make that so. This applies the most to silk tops, which is that a lot of silk tops without lace fronts don't have the most natural hairlines and might even hang a little bit forward because of how the cap construction works. Something that you can always do with a silk top wig without a lace front is that you can definitely either wet down the hairline and pull out some of your own bio hair and blow dry upward to get that nice volume and seamless transition from bio hair into your own to create a natural hairline. Or you could even just use a rat tail comb and a little bit of gel just to get that nice volume up and seamlessly blend your bio hair to create a really beautiful natural blended hairline with your silk top. So there you have it. I know that there are so many other questions and topics that I could be going into. What topics would you like to know about your new wig or topper? I would love to talk about it. Can you pop your suggestions for what we can cover next in the comment box down below? And we'll see you guys next time.